Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ask Coffee Online. My name is Chef Caesar. Today I'm going to be making something very simple. I'm not, we're not cooking anything today, so I'm making a, a cold tropical fruit soup. And this is uh, very refreshing. I know there's some mixed feelings. Some people don't like cold soups, but I want to hear your opinion, guys. Have you guys ever tried a cold soup in a restaurant? Who's here today? You guys are very quiet. What's going on? Morning, Chef. No, I haven't tried it. Never, huh? We'll see how it goes. Well, it's going to go good. I don't know. I mean, uh, this is a very good soup during the summertime when it's very hot, when you want to eat something light. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people don't care for them because, uh, I mean, they don't think about cold soups as, uh, the same way they do about hot soups. But you can make, you know, gazpacho, for example, which is a tomato base with some uh, vegetables, bichuisois, which is a tomato leek soup. And, I mean, uh, you don't see them a lot in menus. Most of the times, like uh, in specials. But uh, it's not like on the regular menu, too. It's almost like a seasonal type of thing. But today I'm going to be making a, a beautiful uh, a tropical fruit soup. I got some nice, beautiful mangoes here, uh, pineapple. I got a dragon fruit. How many of you guys, uh, how many of you had a dragon fruit before? Anybody? I did. You did? What do you think? Do you like them? Nah. <laughs> no, no, no. They don't have a lot of flavor. They're really. There's in there. Yeah, I mean, I want to show a picture of a plant in case some, uh, some of you guys never had it before or never seen it. Uh, this is from a cactus plant family, and they grow in tropical regions like, you know, southern Mexico, Central America, uh, uh, Thailand, you know, and they really, some of these are like, uh, they have a white flesh, some have like a yellow flesh, and also uh, some like really bright red. I don't know which one is this one. I'm going to cut it open just to make sure to see what I got here. And again, this uh, white with a nice uh, little tiny seeds. And the flavor is very light. It's very, it has a lot of uh, juice, uh, crispy texture, but it's not, uh, it doesn't have like a really strong uh, flavor. It's very light, like I said, but it's really uh, nice and refreshing. So I'm going to be using some of this. Kind of bland, Chef. Yeah, it is kind of bland. You're right. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. I like the ones that are like red better because those are like uh, much sweeter, but I've never been able to find them here for some reason. I've, I saw them in Mexico when I went down there a year ago. They have like, you know, the yellow ones, the white, and the bright red, but the red ones are much sweeter. So I'm going to start by, you know, getting my fruit ready. I'm going to put this to the side here. I just want you guys to see this. And I think you guys should. They're expensive too. No, they are. They are very expensive. This one is probably like $4 for one, one fruit. So they're not really, uh, they're not cheap, but, you know, because they're exotic fruits. So that's probably, that's why. So I'm going to start by peeling my mangoes here. You guys can either use a peeler at home. Or if you use your knife, you want to be very careful when you're peeling mangoes. They're very slippery uh, when you take the skin off. So I'm going to make, basically make a base so it can stand, you know, and, uh, without moving. And then you want to just peel the skin off here. Would the other variety of mangoes better, Chef, than this one? This, the, one. the manila ones, those are very sweet, but they don't have as much flesh as these other mangoes. It just really depends on uh, the season, too. Right now, they're in season, so they're really good. And they're very uh, cheap as well. It actually takes longer to get all the fruit ready than it does to actually, you know, puree all the ingredients together. So, I got my mango down here. And you want the mangoes to be uh, nice and soft. This one's could have got a little more, but you know, right now that's all I could find. And I'm going to cut the flesh from here. Okay. I'm going to use probably three mangoes to make my soup. It just depends. I'm going to give you guys a recipe as well. So you can, you know, cut back on the recipe or make more if you want. So if you want to try this, this one's not really that good. So. Thank you, Chef. You're welcome. So one more. And this one is uh, a little more riper, softer. 
That's why I want you guys to kind of you know, cut it in the bottom first to make a base because they're very slippery. You don't want to hold it in your hand when you're peeling mangoes because you can really uh, cut yourself really bad. So I don't want you to, you know, think about safety all the time when you guys are uh, working with knives. And these are very sweet mangoes. Uh, I love mangoes. I don't know if you guys uh, ever, you know, tried them or like them, but, you know, they're really good in my opinion. I, I love them. So, and I like every kind of fruit. I know some people prefer some fruit other than others, but I love mangoes. Okay. So this is going to be enough here. Okay. And you want to chop the mangoes into little small chunks because we want to put them in a blender. I'm gonna keep one piece to the side. It's a, I'm gonna use it as a garnish once my soup is done. Okay. And mangoes have a lot of little tiny fibers in the in, uh, in the flesh, so you're gonna we need to strain this soup. Uh, even when you eat them, you know you're gonna see that you get some little fibers stuck between your teeth, but that's normal. Some people don't like them because of that, but you know. So you want to just cut them into big uh, little chunks. You don't have to cut them very small because we're going to put them in the blender anyways. I also got some um, fresh coconut. I got a young coconut. I, I took the flesh. And this one had a lot of water. Look at this. I got like uh, this little tiny coconut. I had most of the water. And, uh, and you can tell when they have more liquid because they're more heavy. When they're a little lighter, that means uh, uh, they have more flesh than they do uh, water in there. So that's a good way to... Uh, to uh, Pick them when you go buy them. If you want more flesh in the coconut, get the ones that are a little lighter in the weight. So I'm going to put this to the side here. I'm going to uh, cut my pineapple next. Okay. Make sure that you guys uh, ask questions if you have any, okay? I'm only going to be using half a uh, pineapple, so I'm not going to you know, peel the whole thing. I got a question. What can you use besides coconut? Pardon me? What else can you use besides coconut? For this? I mean, you yeah. can you can use uh, all the different fruits. I mean, you don't if you don't like coconut, you can substitute this for another tropical fruit, like uh, maybe some uh, passion fruit or like uh, some guavas too. I don't know if you know where they are. It's like uh, guavas are very good. And they're very, uh, right now they're in season as well. So you can uh, use them as well. If you can't find them fresh, you can also find them frozen too. But fresh is always fresh is always better. Okay, so I got my pineapple. Okay. So, okay. We're almost getting ready to start, you know, making our soup here. Like I told you guys, sometimes it takes longer to prep everything than it really does to do the cooking. This is why it's uh, very important to get your missing plus ready beforehand. But I wanted to show you guys, you know, how to do this. But as you know, when you guys are doing your assignments, you got to have everything ready to go before you start any, uh, the cooking process. And that's the reason why. Because you don't want to stop, you know, halfway through to get something that you're missing. So you're going to be uh, wasting a lot of time. So this is uh, the reason we do that. Okay, now I'm going to put all my pineapple in here. So I'm going to start pureeing my soup. And the best way to do this, you want to allow the soup to, to rest. You want the flavors to marry together. So if you can do it a day before, it's even better. But if you uh, don't have the time, you know, just allow the soup to rest in the cooler for about two hours so it gets nice and cold. And then, you know, the flavor is going to be more intense. Now that we have our fruit cut up here, I'm going to start adding it to my blender here. Okay. I might have to do it in uh, two batches because there's a lot of fruit here. And I don't want this to go you know, all over the place. So I have my mango there, some of the pineapple. Okay. Okay. And we're going to make a nice uh, puree. I'm going to throw some of my young coconut in there too here. Okay. Okay, now I've got some... Uh, plain uh, yogurt here 
And one thing uh, you don't want to do, you don't want to add all the liquids right away because uh, sometimes, especially if the mangoes are very ripe, they're going to be very, uh, the mixture will be very soft. So you want to kind of, you know, keep an eye on that. Even though you have the recipe there, but sometimes, you know, like I said, the fruit might be a little overripe, like the mangoes, for instance, and you don't want uh, to end up with a really uh, runny soup. You should have a nice uh, nappy consistency uh, texture on your soup. So I also got a little honey here. What were the other liquids? Okay, I got some, I'm sorry, uh, pineapple juice, and I got some uh, also coconut milk unsweetened. This is a uh, coconut milk that's not sweet uh, because you don't want to get an oversweet uh, uh, soup. You want to balance the flavors from the uh, sour from the pineapple and the sweet from the, the honey and put in there. Also the mangoes are very sweet too. Uh, I'm going to put a little lime zest in there just to bright things up. As you can see this is very simple uh, to make. There's no cooking involved, like there is with some other cold soups. Okay, I'm going to throw a little lime zest here. If you don't have limes, uh, lemon will do the job too. So, okay. Now we're going to puree our soup here. Batch is done here. Okay, I want to show you the texture of this consistency. As you can see, we're going to still puree, uh, strain this because there's some strengths that, like I was telling you, from the pineapple, the mango that we don't want in there. So I'm going to uh, pour it to my uh, my sieve here while I do the other, uh, the rest of the fruit here. Okay, so. And you might have to uh, give a little uh, help. You're going to uh, push it through with a ladle or a spatula because sometimes it's uh, a little bit thick and doesn't want to go right through. So you want to you know, give it a hand. Now we're going to uh, add the rest of the fruit here. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to use all the pineapple here because I think I have more, a lot more than three cups that you know I needed for this. Add a little more uh, pineapple juice. Also, if you guys want to use uh, uh, passion fruit juice instead of pineapple, it's a really nice uh, flavor that uh, passion fruit has. Okay. Just add a little more of my yogurt here. Let's. If you guys want to use some of the coconut water that you guys are going to get from the fresh coconut, uh, to, you know, kind of it down a little bit that's fine too i'm gonna do that uh right now you guys can also drink this water it's really uh has a beautiful a nice uh, flavor very refreshing did you put in the dragon fruit not yet i'm gonna use it as my garnish for my soup it, do, it doesn't go in this and the soup itself but if you want to but if you want to put it in there you can i mean it's up to you i'm gonna keep it inside to ice it as, as a garnish for my when I play the soup. To the soup here. Okay. It's got a beautiful 
bright yellow color there. So you want to kind of push it through your ladle here. See the consistency? If you think it's uh, too thick for your liking, you can also, also add some more uh, pineapple juice as well to thin it down a little bit. It won't hurt. You're going to see a lot of fibers uh, left behind from the pineapple, from the mango, like little tiny hairs. They're right here in the, look at that. You don't want to serve that, so you need to strain the soup. There you go. Our soup is uh, ready to be, uh, let's taste it first in case we need to adjust the, you know, maybe the sweetness, but this should be good enough because the fruit is very sweet, so. It's not overly sweet because you don't want it to have that, the soup way too sweet. Otherwise, you, you know, you don't want that. So I'm going to put it to the side. At this point, you uh, want to cool it off, put it in the cooler for at least two hours before you serve it, but I'm going to start prepping here my fruit that I'm going to be using to uh, garnish my soup. I'm going to cut up some of this. I also got some uh, edible flowers, some mint I got from my garden here to garnish my soup. I got some pansies, uh, some fresh mint, some lavender flowers that I can, you know, if you guys uh, have some of this at home, use it. I make a little tiny balls here for my or well, you can cut into little uh, cubes too. You don't have to use a melon ball or to, you know, cut the uh, dragon fruit. But this is going to look very nice. Okay. Cut some of my uh, mango. Cut little cubes too. These are going to be my garnish. I'm going to be putting in my uh, my soup. Any questions, you guys? Very easy, right? I told you it was going to be an easy one. You guys are very quiet. You guys didn't have your coffee yet this morning, probably, huh? Okay. This should be good enough for my uh, garnishes here. Now I'm going to clean my pour. Now it's time to... Uh, Plate my soup here. I would normally, like I say, wait you know a few hours so the flavors are married together. But since we don't have a lot of time, I'm gonna, you know, see how the consistency is not very thick or too runny. This is how you wanna get it. I got my little tweezers here. And we use this sometimes in restaurants because these things are very tiny, you know, like the flowers. So you want to really uh, be able to pick them up and drop them in there. So slippery, huh? Okay. Look at that. They're going to float on top. And you know, guys, don't have to do this. I mean, uh, you can do something different. You don't have to really, you know, go all the way out and garnish, you think. But, you know, as you know, it looks beautiful. 
when you uh, make your dishes uh, pretty. And that's the whole thing, you know, you want to really, you know, show your skills as a chef and make things beautiful because, you know, we eat with our eyes. So when you uh, bring something like this to the dining room, you, know, you guys are going to love it. Flowers here too. Looking good, Jeff. Well, thank you. Are those lavender flowers edible? Yes. You can make you make tea. You know what I do with this? Uh, I uh, dry them during the summer. I use them as uh, to make tea. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And the plants keep coming back every year, you know, during the uh, winter time, they don't die for some, you know, they just keep coming back year after year, and uh, I like that. Now I got a little uh, pastry here. Okay. What's the other flower in the middle, Chef? Those are pansies. Oh, pansies. Yeah, they, I mean, I got them at home, too. I got my garden, so they come back, you know, I plant the seeds, and they keep coming back, you know, year after year, so... And here you go, guys. As you can see, wow. it was very easy to uh, to make, very quick. You know, it doesn't take you know a lot of time. You know, there's only a few ingredients, but if you know how to you know combine them, you know properly, you can make something you know wonderful and tasty. So you know, like that's the beauty about cooking. You don't have to have you know a lot of work into a dish. I mean, uh, you can't, but you know, also you can make something very quick, very fast, and very tasty as well. So I want to thank you guys for being here this morning. And I will see you guys in, uh, in a couple of weeks. Well, thank you, Chef. Have a nice day. Thanks so much.